FIFO inventory valuation, which stands for first in, first out, results in the oldest purchases being recorded as cost of goods sold and the most recent purchases remaining in ending inventory. Recall under the periodic inventory tracking system, we don't track the purchases and sales of inventory through the inventory account. So the revenue entry is all that is recorded when the sale occurs. Therefore, costs of goods sold and ending inventory valuation are determined only at the end of the month. Let's look at an example. Let's assume the following inventory data. March 1st, beginning inventory is 200 units at a cost of $10 each. March 4th, we purchased an additional 300 units at $20 each. March 10th, we sold 400 units at $50 each. Now that's the retail price, not the cost. March 20th, we purchased an additional 500 units at $30 each. March 25th, we sold 300 units at a price of $50 each. Finally, March 30th, we purchased 100 units at $40 each. So with this data and using FIFO, let's determine the value of ending inventory and the amount of cost of goods sold that should be recorded. Since inventory isn't accounted for after each transaction, we need to use the cost of goods sold model to determine the value of cost of goods sold and ending inventory. The cost of goods sold model is beginning inventory plus purchases. That equals the goods available for sale. From that, we can subtract ending inventory to arrive at cost of goods sold. We could also subtract the units sold to arrive at ending inventory. This is important to note because sometimes the units sold are given to us and not the ending units, while other times it's the ending units that are given and not the units sold. However, in real life, we know the ending units uh, of inventory because we physically counted them. So we take the data from our problem and put it into the cost of goods sold model. I have uh, chose to solve for ending inventory because we were given the units sold. So we have 1,100 units available for sale with a total cost of $27,000. We know we sold 700 units, so our ending inventory must be 400 units. So let's figure out which 700 units we sold using FIFO. But before we do that, there's a very important concept we need to be aware of using the periodic methods. We assume that all goods are available for sale. So I know, and you know, there isn't any way that the March 30th purchase could have been sold on March 10th. But we ignore that fact when using the periodic method. Now, back to solving this example. So which 700 units did we sell? Well, FIFO stands for first in, first out. So we sold all 200 units of the beginning inventory, leaving zero. We sold all 300 units of the March 4th purchase, leaving zero. And we sold 200 units from the March 20th purchase, leaving 300 units in inventory. So we can account for all 700 units sold, and the cost of those units is $14,000 which is $2,000 plus $6,000 plus the $6,000. Let's plug that amount into the cost of goods sold model. Since the goods available for sale is $27,000, we can determine that the value of the ending, we, excuse me, we can determine the value of the ending inventory by subtracting the cost of goods sold of $14,000. Therefore, ending inventory is $13,000. We could have proved this by using the ending inventory units as well. Since 400 units remain in ending inventory, and those units come from 300 units remaining from the March 20th purchase, and 100 units from the March 30th purchase, you can see that those total the 13,000, and that matches what we've already calculated.